All right, we got Ohio Cast podcast, and we are bringing in new All American, freshly All American, Dylan Demilio. Dylan, welcome to the Ohio Cast podcast. How you doing, buddy? Good, Zeb. Things are going well. Uh, appreciate the intro. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Well, hold on, stop. I, I, let me give you a proper intro, okay? So we've got four time Ohio State champion from Genoa, from Curtis, Ohio. The Curtis Crippler. Is that okay? You okay with Curtis Crippler? Yeah, that's cool. Italian Stallion, Curtis Crippler, whatever you want to be called, I can do that. Uh, for, so four-time Ohio State champion. Um, You guys were two-time team champions, right? Yep. Two-time uh, tournament, two-time duel. Okay, so four-time champions. And then you guys were runner-up the year you edged Joe Carver out with, I think, Lamanji beat someone to add Joe Carver yep. out, right? Yep. That had to feel pretty good, right? I don't know if it felt good for you, Zeb, but uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right, that's cool, yeah. I, I mean I don't care. I mean I'm I'm over here in northeast Ohio. I, I haven't been a rocket since ninety eight, bro. It was uh it was like twenty twenty years too late for me to care. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I gotcha. Hey, it's uh, all the same team, you know, northwest Ohio. Oh just, yeah, I dude, I pulled for you rock guys. With all the schools. I was always pulling for you guys. I want to see you guys win. Yeah, I know. Yep. I mean, there's no question. Whether it's Ottawa County, man, I want to see Ottawa County teams do good. And I here's the wildest thing that you can probably attest to. Um, your schools are at like in the northwest, they're so small. You guys are at a huge disadvantage. I know you're in Columbus and you're in the metro area now, and now you're starting to see all these schools to sales. I know you see obviously um, you know, Watterson, because they got a big Ohio State presence on the coaching staff. Um, but like you look at it, you guys are at a huge disadvantage. And what you guys did at Genoa, um, you know, six state champions in a year. Did you break the scoring record too? Yeah, we did. What was do you know the point value? Uh I don't know the point value. We weren't in the two hundreds, like some so schools have been up there, but one high one hundred. So wow. Yeah. That's incredible, man. I don't think that's ever gonna be eclipsed, you know, not unless somebody um really puts together like i mean they have to put together like a saint edward type lineup because you guys were that good i think you guys could roll with the big division one teams you guys were that good Mm -hmm. yeah it was special it was a special um team and special year for us and we had it was fun i mean (laughs) winning's fun but it was just the band the band of brothers we had going um made it really cool what was wild about it was which sanchez brother beat cole matten Julian did. Julian, Julian's at West Point, right? Yep. So Julian Sanchez beats returning champ Cole Matten. Because I don't think anybody had that going that way. Because didn't Cole beat him all year? I'm not. I can't contest it. I'm not sure. I don't know if they wrestled during the year. Um, That's or wild. not. But it's wild <laughs> to think about it because it's like two Northwest Ohio guys are squaring off in the finals. And now they're both D1, you know, I mean, Cole's going to be a dentist now. You beat Cole mm-hmm. with the round of 16 this year? Man, me and Cole had to wrestle so much this year. And anytime there's a chance we could wrestle, we wrestled. I mean, Michigan State Open, Vegas, Big Tens, Nationals, obviously the duel. So it's like, you know, it's never fun wrestling, you know, your buddy. And then every chance we got, we had to wrestle each other. So you know, it's kind of a, one of those situations that just stinks. But, yeah, I mean, we wrestled a ton this year. What was your record against him just this year? Um, So, yeah, this year, Michigan State, um, he shot in right away, uh, got a takedown, and I tore my MCL, so injury defaulted out of the match. So he and wins then, that um, one. Yeah, he wins that one. And then, um, yeah, I, I won the rest of them. I don't know, I think, four. I'm not sure. You were four and one against him this year. And then um, Vegas picked. Yeah. Yeah. So four and one against Cole Matten. Um, that's the big thing with you. The crazy thing about you is injuries, man. You've torn. How many times have you torn your MCLs? Yeah, which is, it's crazy too. Cause I was never that guy, you know, I was always, um, you know, pretty lucky and blessed throughout high school and, you know, all the elementary stuff and that kind of thing. Never really dealt with injuries. Um, first time I ever hurt something was 
my junior year, year of high school and I did tear my MCL. But luckily too, all have been minor tears. So um just a two or three week sideline then, you know, you slowly roll back into, you know, okay, you can drill, then you can you can spar, you can go live, all right, you're ready to compete. That kind of thing. But since college it's crazy. Uh so I've had I don't know how many times, but MCL on both legs, I think LCL on one and probably, I don't know, I would say MCL again, you could probably throw in there, but yeah, it's just been weird because it's never been something I've dealt with and then, you know, just dealt with it a lot. What's wild to me is like when you say that, um, you weren't wrestling in the Big Ten in uh, OAC grade school state, you weren't wrestling in the Big Ten in junior high when you were in the OAC yes. you know, state finals, you weren't wrestling in, um, you were wrestling in Division Three Ohio. Um uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think your freshman year, you should have been undefeated as a freshman and you should have won the Ironman. I don't know what happened in the Ironman finals. Your freshman year, yeah. who were you wrestling? I forget dude from, uh, was it Keaton? It was. Yep. Yep. And you tilted him and it was like clear, clear as day, a full five count of near fall. I'm not making this up. Am I? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I thought um could have definitely been scored. Um uh, I was hoping I could have got some back points there, but um just one of those matches where I remember just like everything was just things didn't go right, you know, all the things that could have gone right or wrong, they just all went wrong for me. Um so that was that was a tough one and then never ended up winning Iron Man. So that uh you know, that's always just something like dang, wish I could have got one there, but dude, the one year you lost to Frankie Talshahar in the like quarters or semis. Semis, yeah, that was crazy too. That was yeah. crazy because you dominated the match and then he snakes you at the very end. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I was winning and controlled the whole match and then I, I mean, think you're just pushing like him around two you're seconds taking left. all the shots. It was insane. And he takes you down with like a, a like a PA snake. He's a Florida guy, I know, but like he like mm -hmm. PA snaked you. He like PA snaked you hundred percent. Yeah. He just into the single leg, and I think he uh, just got, I mean, you know, basic limp arm, but I, it worked and got the quick takedown. And that one, yeah, that one stung because I was feeling good. And then just, man, let it go at the end. It's wild to me to think about these these losses, right? Like, I'm bringing up losses that you had. You know, I mean, you've won way more than you've obviously lost throughout youth, middle school. And I've been following you since you were a little, little guy. Like, mm -hmm. a little, like when you first started. I remember yeah. from elementary OAC, junior high, calling your matches. Mm -hmm. And like you've always won the big matches. I remember the big one in middle school was you and the uh Jordan Crace, right? Yeah, we, we used to wrestle all the time in the state OAC state finals. Dude, it was elementary you wrestled in the finals. It was junior high you wrestled in the finals. How many times did you guys mm -hmm. wrestle at OAC stuff? <laughs> So we wrestled for the first time OAC state finals when I was in fourth grade. Oh then we wrestled in the state finals in fifth grade. <laughs> then in sixth grade, we wrestled in the state finals twice because we did, we're in the grade school state finals up. and okay. both were in the junior high state finals. Then we wrestled each other in the seventh grade state finals. So from fourth to seventh grade, I wrestled in state finals every year. What was your record against? Were you four, uh, three and one? He got you one. Just the state you know finals. Yeah, I mean the first one, and then and one more, and that so I think fourth grade and seventh grade he won. So it was two and, and two. then. Well, I won twice in sixth grade. <laughs> so, but total so, you were two and two against him, right? No, well he won fourth grade, I won fifth grade, and then sixth grade, sixth grade. So that's because it was two or three and two. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. What are those matches like? I'm bringing up these like heartbreakers that you lost. Obviously, the Crace one was like you know elementary school, and middle school, right? Mm -hmm. But like those two high school ones at the Iron Man, I bring up. How much do you mm -hmm. think you learned from stuff like that? And like Genoa, obviously, is a, a Division three team, which is the smallest division in Ohio. People don't understand, and it's ultimately mm -hmm. the division that people kind of kind of dog on, right? Like you and mm -hmm. you and Jay Jaggers and. uh Logan Steber, all D3 guys. Tommy yeah. Rose, D3 guy, right? Also, yeah. All-time greats in the state of Ohio were Division three guys. I don't think D3 gets the credit that it's due. I, I think that by the names I just said, and you included, 
D3 should get a little mm-hmm. more respect. What do you think of that? And then Genoa, you guys always went to the Iron Man when you were at Genoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, first, it actually makes it easier for me uh, when you talk about, you know, losses from, uh, you know, forever ago, just because they're easy there. You remember them. Even as a little kid, you kind of remember them. So it's actually kind of helpful that we're talking about some of the losses. Um, but, yeah, as far as D3 goes, um, yeah, there's some uh, – it probably doesn't get as much respect as it deserves. Um, you could make the argument that D1 is deeper. Um, at the state tournament, and I wouldn't disagree with that. But, I mean, the guys that are, you know, banging in D3, you know, kind of at the, the top, they can they can bang, you know, throughout the divisions. And, um, you know, you can look at, like, the what they're doing nationally, and that's kind of, you know, the biggest testament. But small school, big school, you can be successful. I mean, definitely either way. Uh, the guys you just mentioned. You know, most of my coach, half my coaches, you know, D3 Ohio guys. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and then going to the Ironman, that was always big because you want to get those tournaments on the schedule. Um, also, like, it's not a bad thing to take a loss at the Ironman, right? It's in, um, I don't know if it's the end of November or December. early December. December, yeah. December. Yeah, I mean, loss in December might be, as much as it stinks, it might be good for you. You know, it might be all right to, you know, lose the buzzer in the semis or, you know, take a loss in the final. You know, it's it's good. It's, it's good wrestling. You're trying to compete with really tough guys, and that's what you need. Um, you need to be out there and, and scrapping. Otherwise, and I'm, you know, thankful for my coaches and, you know, guys getting Genoa there, you know, because you need certain qualifications and that kind of thing to be there. Um, you know, but you're not getting the same bang for your buck going to a tournament where you dominate people right so that was big and and that's a good thing about you know what things happened at Genoa were too was we tried to get us out there as much as we could you know for small d3 school uh Colin Moore also division three I mean I don't listen I don't want to slight yeah. anyone who, who's a division mm-hmm. three guy because division three just doesn't get the um credit that it's due you had a freshman on the team this year Gavin Brown he's a d3 mm-hmm. guy um, I mean, yeah, Romero. It, yeah, Caleb Romero, uh, the Mechanicsburg. So it's like awesome to think about it. You know, uh, if you look at your all Americans, right? Look at your all Americans. We've got some D3 guys, right? Uh, yeah. you know, you look at your coaching staff, we've got some D3 Ohio guys. I, I, you know, listen, I love it. I love covering D3 because, as you know, obviously, O'Carver dropped to D3 when we were there. Mm-hmm. My nephew Ian mm-hmm. was there, and then all my brothers and myself, it was always D2. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, yeah. my brother Chad qualified for the state tournament one year in 1988. My brother Chad qualified in Division Three. Was I believe it was single A then. Mm-hmm. Um, and then O'Carver like did a one year thing. I because now you got to do two years, right? Um, mm-hmm. yeah, O'Carver was one year. He was D three, and then um, they've been D two all the way up until like 2014. I want to say they were D two, and then they you know the school. Um, the enrollments dropped, you know, and those are rural areas, right? Like where you're from, there's mm-hmm. it's a bunch of farm fields. Yeah. And um, Oak Harbor runs into Lake Erie. It's got a big coastline with Lake Erie. Do you guys mm-hmm. you know it doesn't have any coastline? It's all clay, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, clay. So, I mean, Curtis is just a little bit north of Genoa. Um, I mean, three miles north, you know, um, that's why they call it Genoa area. Um, so, so okay. I'm about five minutes from the bay. Okay, so you half of Curtis is uh like the town's tiny. The town's probably maybe a thousand people. Village. The, the village, village of Curtis. Village of Curtis might be a thousand people, right? Oh, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I've gotta be like bad I mean, for that. But it's not it, a lot. It's not, right? It's if it's a thousand people, I'd be shocked. But what's crazy about it is half the town is clay and half the town's you know it, right? Yeah, pretty uh Cur- yeah. Is Brown Road bit. is Brown Road the boundary. Um, I could see that. That 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 would make sense to me. I don't know the exact boundary, but I'm sure I could I'd be real close to being able to go to Clay without a without a problem there. That's um, wild to think, man. And then because people that live in my neighborhood I know went to Clay. So Yeah, uh and then like uh 
down the road from you, like off of Brown Road, I want to say like off of Pickle Road is where like Matt Stencil is from. Yeah. Yeah, he was off of Pickle oh. Road. And like, it's all right. Yeah, it's like crazy to think about. Like the schools are right there, but there's more spread out than the schools are here, man. The schools here, mm-hmm. like there's a school within a mile, another public school within a mile mm-hmm. of the school that I teach at. And my yeah, that's crazy. Got 400, almost 400 kids a class, 350, 400 a class. And then that school's got probably anywhere from 150 to 200 a class. It's Harvey and Riverside. So it's crazy to think like you guys mm-hmm. are at a disadvantage because you don't have the population density is not the same in Northwest Ohio and Toledo as mm-hmm. Columbus, as Cleveland, Akron, Canton, Cincinnati. You know what I mean? That's what I talk. And then obviously mm-hmm. like Southeast Ohio is at a big disadvantage because you know, what's Athens, the biggest town there, right? Mm-hmm. Then they're, they're real spread out and it's Hills and Appalachia type deal. So they're at a bit, I, I think them in Northwest Ohio, are probably at the biggest disadvantage there, obviously the furthest behind because, Mm-hmm. You guys have Toledo and Detroit's not far away. Yeah. There's a lot of industry. There's not much going on in Southeast Ohio, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that. Do you know that? I ran a camp around there um, last summer. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's not, you're, I mean, you're right. Yeah. But here's the wildest thing about it. Here's what, like about you, about, you know, you can be from anywhere and be great. Cause if you look, Probably the best quarterback in the NFL right now is from freaking Athens, Ohio. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I, you know, Joe Burrow, mm-hmm. I call it Joe Burrow effect, man. You can be from Bozeman, Montana, Bakersfield, California, uh, Athens, Ohio, and you can still be Genoa, Curtis, Ohio. You can still be great. Mm-hmm. I don't think people, I think people think you got to be from like the Bay area. You got to be from, you know, uh, Lehigh Valley and wrestling mm-hmm. or, you know, you got to have people from these hot spots. Well, Whip Hill, you know, Pittsburgh area. No, you can be from anywhere and be really good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it comes down to just, um, do you have somebody to train with? And you know, have, do you have someone in your corner giving you good advice, right? To how you should train or who's telling you what to do, that kind of thing. But yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of still up to you no matter where you're at. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, wasn't there somebody from Alaska that's your sense of is that, um there's always like a guy like alaska had this dude one year he took fourth he was like a george mason guy and then he transferred to oklahoma state his kale byers was in and that dude was really good he beat dustin kilgore the year mm-hmm. dustin kilgore won the ncas and then he, i think he took like fourth at the weight and he was at george mason and he transferred to oklahoma mm-hmm. state but it's like yeah you can be from anywhere the hopkins hopkins brothers yeah. from campbell they're both from alaska yeah so you can be mm-hmm. from anywhere but i think People think you need to be from a hotbed, right? That's not true. Mm-hmm. You and Joe Burrow ain't from a hotbed of much anything, right? Yeah. And yeah. he's doing pretty good, I think. Yeah, I think he's all right. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, speaking of, you know, on this topic, right, you can be really good. The driving force and, you know, your dad is definitely the person I think of when I think of your success. And everywhere I ever saw you, whether it was at Burnett's, OAC, didn't matter wherever I saw you, your dad was always right there. Right. Um, how much does your dad, Dom D'Amelio mean to you? And what has he done for you and your career in wrestling education and everything that you've done uh, thus far in your life? Yeah. I mean, you're spot on. I'm glad you brought that up because he's, I mean, he's the man, you know, um, he's kind of, you're right. He's the reason for my success. Um, kind of what he kind of, got me in he got me you know he got me started with wrestling um kind of sought out you know elite clubs like okay let's start going to Burnett's um that happened um I mean that was the best thing for me too um you know Scotty and Eric Burnett two unbelievable guys unbelievable coaches um so couldn't think of a better club to be a part of and that's you know my dad taking me there and I mean it's an hour drive to those practices so that was you know frequent thing twice a week uh, at least for those practices and then you just think about all the travel and then you know you grow older and you look back and like wow the amount of expenses and time that went into pretty much my training alone and then you know these trips you take where you're trying to seek these big national tournaments whether it's a dual tournament or whatnot but um, there's a lot of energy and effort and resources spent on you know my success and 
besides that too, just the effort and kind of support he poured into me and, you know, don't forget my mom too. My mom is right there with us. Um, you know, just the support I've gotten from my family is crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's definitely not, it would be incredibly selfish and inaccurate to say, um, you know, I'm here because just what I've done. Um, I mean, great family situation. Um, my family's been amazing. I mean, my brothers and my sister, I mean, I just, I'm really, I'm really blessed and fortunate in that aspect. And that's like definitely the number one reason for the successes I have. I've had, I have had, um, but, but going back to my dad, he would do anything. Um, he's still kicking in. He's probably the, he's probably the hardest working guy I know, just typical at life. Um, you know, he works nine to five every day. Um, you know, just pumping iron during his lunch break every day, you know, three times a week, whatever it is, but you know, still gets his workouts in, eats incredibly well, you know, comes home, does more work, whether it's usually in the yard or um whatever it's bills or whatever. I mean, whatever it needs or extra practices. He'd run extra practices first two at Genoa, um, or taking me to practice. Then, you know, and same things on the weekend. It's like, man, this guy doesn't, doesn't stop. He's in, he's doing yard work. He's got he's always got projects too. So he's, you know, doing some woodwork project, helping my sister out with her house, helping my brother out with his house. I mean, looking back at like just the the life my dad lives is incredibly disciplined. Um and kind of having that example and role model um, you know, in my life always. Um, you know, it's special. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm recognized I'm at, old enough and, you know, have enough insight to know like how rare and lucky I am to have somebody like him, you know, not only in my corner, but like as my dad. So yeah, I mean, you hit that on the head. Um, he's number one contributor um, of my success. When you say like having a role model like that, you know, the thing about you, the big thing that's out about you that everybody knows is you do everything right. You do everything max effort. You do everything right. There's no shortcuts. You don't do anything wrong. You don't cut weight wrong. Whenever It's like pure leadership when people talk about you, right? And then for me, it's super frustrating seeing a guy like you. I knew, you know, I knew your pedigree. And then you kept getting, you would get injured midseason. Things would happen. I don't think people really understand that Big Ten grind. Even like when you said it tonight, you're like, oh, man, you know, I was real lucky not getting hurt. The reason mm-hmm. you didn't get hurt when you were a youth and when you were in middle school and high mm-hmm. school you weren't wrestling in the big Ten, Yeah. And I, and like, I just don't think people get it, man. I like this year, Patty, uh, people were, uh, were saying things about Patty Gallagher. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? What are mm-hmm. you talking about? I think he had the match with, uh, uh, Penn state, uh, Haynes. Yeah. He had the match with Haynes and Haynes kind of rolled on him in the duel and people were talking about him. I'm like, guys, you have no idea what Patty Gallagher is going through right now. Mm-hmm. You have no clue what he's going through. You don't know what his weight cut was this week. You don't know what mm-hmm. his class schedule is this week. You don't know who he's rolling with. You don't know what he's doing extra on the other side of it. And you got to understand this guy was like, he was the, uh, he was the Dave Schultz guy. He was the, he was the pound for pound guy mm-hmm. his senior year. Mm-hmm. And then people had these, these expectations, which, expectations are great because that means people you know you're 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 known and obviously Mm -hmm. very good and then they they just start they were saying things about patty gallagher and i'm like you you have no clue you guys have Mm -hmm. no idea what patty gallagher is going into and then when you guys hit the big duel the the big 10 dual meet schedule which is like maybe there's usually like one at the end right before like the midland scuffle like they'll do like Mm -hmm. a december ish one maybe one one a couple teams will do that and then you Mm -hmm. got that uh friday Sunday or you you got the the two weigh ins right usually what's it a Friday Sunday usually in the big yeah time. we had a yeah Friday Sunday we I think we went like two or three Friday Sundays in a row which those are a grind because you know it'd be better just to go back to back days or um because you get an extra pound which would be nice but you know you balance recovery weight cut um feeling good it's like a weird balance and you just kind of like, you just get used to it and get tough about it, but uh, it's probably not the favorite, um, you know, schedule or how things land, you know, for that Friday, Sunday is the grind. But I think that's what sets you guys apart. 
I think that's what makes mm-hmm. the Big Ten the Big Ten. I think that you mm-hmm. don't hide from anybody. There's no ducking. Mm-hmm. There's no like, and people want to say this team ducks or that team holds out. That no, <laughs> if they do, mm-hmm. maybe it's once or a guy's dinged up, whatever. I just mm-hmm. don't think people get the grind that you're in in the Big Ten. And is this your this is your fourth year, right? Yeah, this past year was my fourth year. Yeah, so you just finished your fourth year. So you did it. You you know you've achieved all American status. You took eighth this past year. You did that within the the natural time period, but you did redshirt a year, and you know, and then with COVID, mm-hmm. you have two seasons left, right? Yeah. So yeah. so within that, you grounded out. You 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 beat the number one guy in the country for most of the year, um, Matthews of Pitt, Cole Matthews of Pitt. Mm-hmm. Um, in the All-American run, which I don't like that matchup. I'm not going to like you, lie to you because I'm a big fan of his as well. Mm-hmm. Um, great guy, great kid, you know, and a guy mm-hmm. you've probably seen around forever since you guys mm-hmm. were old. Um, But, uh, you know, you beat a really – you beat a bona fide guy. You beat a nightmare round of 12 opponent. You beat a funk master. Mm-hmm. You beat a guy who was the highest returning All-American at the weight. Um, you beat a nightmare guy. You beat a guy who I don't want you wrestling in the round of 12 if you want the truth. If it's me sitting at mm-hmm. home – Feeding my fire, watching the NCAs. That's not a matchup I want. I'm sure that's not a matchup mm-hmm. Dom, Dom D'Amelio wants or anybody. But like, was there any doubt in your mind in that round of twelve blood round match with uh, Cole Matthews that you could win that bout? No, there wasn't any doubt. And th- the good thing was, I'm not going to say like, oh no, there's no doubt. I was, you know, I was going to go in there and win that match. It was just, you know, I took it like I would approach any match. Um, just let's roll. You know, let's rock. This is. This is a great opportunity. Um, our the mojo of the team was so cool at nationals. Um, you know, it was some of the best experiences. Just, just our mojo was just it was just, it was great. And I think mostly, um, at least from my end, is a lot of you know me and Jesse. Um, just because we were, I we were always warming up at the same time that kind of thing. Like I like me and Jesse were kind of from my perspective feeding on each other a lot. And I know the whole the whole team was. Um, you know, feeling good too. And, you know, some guys, you know, it wasn't, you know, the great outcome, but overall as a team go into it, we were all in just such a good headspace and just, I just love the way um, everybody was kind of like approaching it. Mood was light, but we were focused and just kind of just approached all our matches like that. And, you know, we lost some, we won some, I know uh, like right before that match too with Matthews, I'm in my, you know, just doing my typical warm up, my like kind of my mental routine I go through, that kind of thing, and I'm I'm watching Jesse a little bit too, and you know, not paying attention, but you know, keeping an eye on the score because he's up right now and he's wrestling Bird in the All American match, which is another, you know, heated round of twelve match, and goes into overtime, and then I'm up, so I'm like, oh. I didn't got to know, I didn't know if he won or not, um, and just kind of just approached my match with, you know, let's let's go let it fly and did that and you know got the win and you know gave jaggers the hug and then you know we're walking off and he goes did you hear about jesse i was like no like did he win and he's like yeah he won and it's like then we got like you know then i was hyped for jesse and it was just really cool um so yeah i think i we just approached it like we like we would and just the spirits and the energy of the team was in a really good spot um yeah and then going back to what you said with going from high school to a big 10 schedule or just even division one wrestling. Like everybody kind of like, you know, tells you, yeah, you know, it's different. It's that like, it's, it's a new level. And it's like, when I was in high school, I believed them. Like, don't get me wrong. I was like, I, I believe you. Like, I, I'm not going to say no way. Like I'm, I'm there. Cause I knew I was, I went to RTC, RTC practices as much as I could um, when I was in high school, which was great. That was, that's a great um, source of training for a high school kid. Um, so, you know, I felt the college guys was like, oh, you know, it's different feel. There's stronger, faster, more technical. And then you go through the grind of a Big Ten season and it's like, wow, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on here. You know, it's it's uh, it's heaters just, you know, over and over again. You don't really you can't slouch at anybody. Um, yeah, just just the grind. It's, it's, a, it's another level. And, you know, we mentioned Patty, too, and just. Patty's kind of similar. We're kind of similar people. Um, you know, it's kind of similar situations. He's a he's a grinder. He works his butt off all the time. Um, 
does the right things, lives the right life. Um, you know, and we did, we kind of made it a point this year too. Hey, we're not messing with any social media stuff because they'll, they'll tear you up, <laughs> you know, in a, in, a, in a big 10 schedule where, you know, things might be going up and down and just don't need to pay attention to that. So I could imagine some people might've been, you know, saying some things or whatnot, but Patty Gallagher, Gallagher will be all right. I mean, that guy, that guy works like an animal. Um, you know, like he, he's kind of like me, you know, came in from high school, um, a lot of, a lot of success there. Um, a little bit of a tough first year. Um, he would tell you it's a, it was a tough year. Probably didn't live up to the ex- expectations he had for himself, but, um, his development's going, I mean, it's going good. He's, he's making gains and got his head on straight and he's, he's rocking and rolling. So, I mean, I know, you know, it. I mean, just like you said, like people don't, people don't completely understand, but, um, he's in a good spot and he, he, he works, he works like an animal. Um, He's in a good spot too. Yeah. What would you say to a high school kid who thinks they understand what the jump's going to be like and what the grind's going to be like? What would you say? How can they even prepare for it? You know, you said the RTC practices, but is there even anything they can do to prepare for that jump into Division One college wrestling and in the best conference? You know, historically speaking, um, the numbers speak for itself in, in the Big Ten. Is there anything kids can even do to prepare for that jump and that that grind? Yeah, I mean, there's not – you can't really be completely com- prepared for it. Um, you know, RTC practices is probably the closest thing um, to that experience. You know, you're getting some hands on some college guys and probably getting your butt kicked a little bit, but that's that's the process, right? So we, we have guys come in, you know, the guys that – you know, big recruits, they'll come in and enroll early in the summer. Um, and that summer, man, it's like – it's like you're uh you just get your butt kicked, right? Like you get in there, it's like, okay, let me welcome to college wrestling. You know, you're in there and you get your butt kicked, you get your butt kicked. After a while, okay, I'm getting my butt kicked a little bit less. All right, I almost got a takedown on this guy. You know, you know, for me it's like Luke Pletcher. It's like, ah, shoot, man, like I almost got him, you know, and then it's like, oh man, man, maybe I got a takedown. And it's like eventually you just get your bucket less until you're, you know, maybe you're even with the guy and, and you arrive, but it takes, it takes a while. And, you know, that's something Tom preaches too, uh, coach Ryan about, you know, don't, don't, it's wrestling, the truth telling sport. Right. So um, you go out there and you don't take it easy on your partner. Cause you know, you love him and you want him to get better. And that's the best way for him to get better is you go out there and you wrestle hard and you don't hold back and, that's how they can assess and kind of figure it out too. Um, excuse me, but yeah, that, uh, that process of just kind of being thrown in the fire, um, is really the only way you're going to learn just because you can't, it'd be incredibly hard to simulate elsewhere. You know, coach Ryan's obviously a genius when it comes to promotion, um, social media, and if you look at, you know, obviously how your arena is built, how, you know, you share the space with volleyball, I believe it is, um, the stage, the announcers, you got multiple announcers, two different announcers, got a public address announcer, you got a hype man, you got, he does, he's done everything right. He's built the, you know, they're the one besides Iowa, you know, in 2021, 2015, Logan Stever was the leader and the catalyst for the 2015 NCAA championship team at Ohio State, but like. He, he's got it figured out how, you know, he, in the 2018 race um in Cleveland, were you in high school? Was that your last year? Was that your senior year, 2018? That was 2018, I believe. Yeah. So I was yeah. still in high school. So that was the, one of the greatest races I've ever seen mm-hmm. um, with Penn state and ultimately came down to Bo nickel pinning, you know, miles Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, what a great race, right? And Ohio state wins the NCAA tournament, you know, 90% of the other NCAA tournaments. Right. It's mm-hmm. just a fabulous race. It's a great story. Flow Wrestling was with them. Penn State does a whole nother thing, right? They don't do anything until after the semifinals of the NCAAs. They're not doing as much media, right? Mm-hmm. Coach Ryan brought Flow Wrestling for that 2018. 
and then he brought um the, the, the Flow Wrestling did a Young Bucks thing, right? What was mm-hmm. that like having the cameraman? And they weren't there every day, right? They were there right. a lot. They were there a lot, though. Yeah. What was that like for you, having Flow Wrestling in the room in the Young Bucks uh, series? Yeah, first was I mean speaking to, about Tom and this, what makes him great is he's an incredible leader. Um, you know, it's it's not it's it's taken for granted. You know, we take it for granted, and I take it for granted how great of a leader he is. And I, um, you know, not all programs have that. Um, have a guy you know sitting, you know, at the head of the table, but and making the right decisions in the best interest for the guys. It makes sense. You know, he's she's trying to get us perks he can get us he's trying to get us in the situations that are you know the best for us connect us with the right resources that kind of thing um so his his leadership he's a guy you, you can you can just trust and you know he's he's working for the best interest of you all the time i mean you talk to him and you know like he's got some things going on you know he's he might be he might be talking a million miles you know a minute um but he's got ideas and he's he's personable and cares about people and um, he'll take care of you. So having a guy like that, you kind of just trust what he's doing um, because we're part of a great organization with a great leader who's, who's spearheading it. And then, um, you know, Flo comes and they're doing this Young Buck series on, uh, you know, the guys we got coming in, and a really great recruiting class with a bunch of really talented and just, just good dudes. So, um, yeah, at times having a camera in your face isn't the most, you know, exciting thing in the world, right? Like, Oh man, man, like there's times where you just want to, you know, um, cameras off and want to just kind of be a hundred percent, just how, you know, rock how you're rocking, but it changes the dynamic, you know, with, you know, flow there and stuff like that sometimes, but ultimately I, it didn't have that big of an impact. Just kind of, it is extra, it's just an extra layer of something, something that's there. Um, but I think they did a good job and res- they were respectful too. Um, you know, if there if there's ever a time where like maybe there's too many cameras around or um, you know, it wasn't like necessarily me, but you know, some of the guys that were getting heavily fouled, like, you know, the young guys that you you know, the young bucks, they had a lot of attention. Um, I know feeling like that cameras on their back um at all times can be a lot, but they were really respectful if like we communicated, hey, maybe in this scenario we need a little bit more space or not. So they did a good job of, you know, putting the guy's needs first and, you know, kind of trying to communicate that two ways, um, you know, just to make it a, a good experience. So that, you know, that's, that's cool of them to be understanding and respectful of um, everybody's situation a little bit. Who came, who was their like content person? Was it Mark Bader? Yeah. Bader was there. Um, he was the main guy that was there. Dude. I love Mark Bader. You just got to know Mark Bader and I had a a little bit of fun in London in 2012. Um, Mark Bader is a maniac. Uh, We traveled together. Hey, we did his first coverage ever. This is crazy. We did the first coverage Mark Bader ever did was in like 2009. They had a site called Pure Fight and we covered an NAAFS in Columbus in like uh, Gahanna or something on the east side of Columbus. That was the mm-hmm. first uh, coverage Mark Bader ever did. And then Tom Ryan got his tickets for like the Ohio State, Florida Atlantic game or something. And Mark Bader wore a yellow shirt to the game. Everybody mm-hmm. else was wearing red or it was a mm-hmm. white out or whatever it was. Mark Bader had a yellow. Uh, he went to Vianney High School and he was wearing a Vianney mm-hmm. High School yellow shirt and everyone's like what are you doing and he's like mark being mark bader but that was the first time that him and i ever worked together it was like 2009 he's the best mark bader's really good at his job he's passionate he's knowledgeable mm-hmm. he's energetic um we had a lot of fun in london i'm not gonna lie to you mm-hmm. um good dude and then you know joe williamson was another guy i don't know if you remember joe Good guys, man. Really good guys. And, they, you know, when you have passionate people like Mark Bader, I always feel really confident about um, how things are going to go. I helped him with the Terry, the Terry one. You remember the mm-hmm. Terry movie with Terry, Terry Brands? Yeah. I did Tom Ryan's interviews for that and what Terry Brands interview for that. And, but those are, they do a good job and they're thorough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, but like at what point are, are 
at what point, you know, you're, you're such a reserved, nice guy. Did you ever have to tell anybody like, Hey, maybe just hang back here. Did you ever have to tell anybody that Dylan? No, I, I didn't have to. Um, I know there were times where it had been said. Yeah. Um, so like I said too, like I wasn't the guy with the camera down my back most of the time. Um, Bazakis, Jesse, Feldman, probably Luke, Luke a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and um, maybe Gavin Brown, right? Because those are like the, the 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 big ones that we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably missed somebody, but like there, you have all these guys you brought in who mm -hmm. are this amazing recruiting class. Listen, I think it worked out pretty good because you guys wrestled out of your minds at the NCAA tournament. What's it like wrestling your best? the last tournament of the year and coming home with a team trophy for you guys. You guys got fourth. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody had you penciled in for fourth. I don't know if you guys, maybe you guys had you penciled in for fourth, but like to finish the way you finished with a camera crew around, not bad. Mm -hmm. Got the team's all Americans. Right. And then you had, you mm -hmm. guys, you had two former all Americans that, you know, Carson and um, Tate did an all American lost in blood rounds. Right. So you guys could, mm -hmm. I mean, it could have even been better because we know those guys are capable. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. But like how you guys wrestled and then, you know, and you lost your 125 behind someone. I mean, it was, it was just super touching, going crazy, but that being your best tournament and it being all documented, what was that like for you? Yeah. First off, thankful that it went well, right. If you said they, you know, we're getting, they're documenting it and it, and it doesn't go well. It's like, oof, it's a not a good thing to be, you know, on the record, right. Like her, Makes it less exciting, at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have Hoffman in there too, who's returning All American. Yeah, Hoffman. Um, yeah, three, so, you had three guys, right? So I mm -hmm. missed Hoffman. Oh my God, that's insane. Yeah, and then you wipe out all of Malik's points. Um, you know, had a season ending injury prior to the Big Tens, which, you know, you've, your heart goes out to that guy because he's another one that does just always does the right things. Never, never into any kind of trouble or you don't have to worry about him. He's a great worker and just a, a teammate and you know he is poised you know i believe he was poised for you know to all american and and have a great end to his career um but unfortunately you know injuries happen and you know we had the injury bug this year and that's a big thing too like really. um you know we might have had a little bit of a shaky season um in some senses but i think we had a full lineup full lineup as in the guys that wrestled at nationals in the lineup maybe once um, or twice the whole year, and that includes Big Tens and Nationals because Malik wasn't there. So, um, that's kind of crazy. Um, and everybody pretty much missed significant time, um, throughout that lineup, other than Sammy, um, Sasso. So, luckily, he was able to start, stay healthy, but everybody else was, you know, kind of battling just these injuries and, you know, having guys that weren't fully recovered at Nationals, um, you know. It's a it's an impact, and it's not. It's even if you are, you know, fully covered recovered by nationals. It's like okay, well, what's my training looked like for the last month? You know, it's all these things coming together. It's kind of made it a wild ride this season, right? But um, you know, like I talked about earlier, just before, even during the national tournament, um, just we have a really good group of guys. Like the the our, the culture of the team, like we're we're a band of brothers, and you joke around, joke around, and you know, have a good time and also be serious and focused and we got each other's back and, you know, we started picking up, up some momentum and just kind of kept rocking and, and rolling with it too. And, and it's, it's interesting too. I said like how me and Jesse were kind of like, I was feeding off Jesse, Jesse was feeding off me um, because we're so close in weight, but also like national tournament, you go back to the hotel a lot. Um, you know, the sessions are split up so much and, you know, if you can go back to the hotel and lay down for a little bit, and you're going to do that because you can, you know, get that rest that's necessary. Um, so it's kind of split a little bit. Like, you know, I didn't – when the big guys were wrestling, I was usually laying down um, or something like that. Um, but overall, this, the energy of the team was awesome. Um, and that just, that just comes from, you know, the culture that we have and um, just the guys. I have no, there's nobody on the team that, you know, isn't one of the guys. You know, I, I think that would be crazy. I don't even know how that would work if, you know, somebody wasn't – able to be a part of that culture because they're just they're so strong. And that's a testament of our coaches too, because they're they're just one of the guys too, which is awesome. 
you know, they don't put, um, I don't know, like they don't hold their power over us or anything like that. It's just, they're, you know, we're, we're spending more time with them than we do with anybody else. And vice versa, you know, Jaggers makes a joke that, you know, he sees us more than he sees his wife. And it's probably true, but I don't think there's, that's, there's probably no lie in that, um, especially, you know, in March. So I just think uh, the way our team operates and um, it just it just kind of boiled down to having a special special weekend and it was it was cool and we were right there for a third place trophy could have that was very tangible too um, but yeah it was it was it was cool and and uh, I think I mean we we deserve to have you know a good tournament just the way we've worked and you know could have a better too you know guys like you know that maybe didn't all american like you mentioned um they're in the same boat right sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't um some guys it happened and some guys that didn't and you know you kind of ride that wave a little bit but those guys you know carson gavin Tate, um that are returning all americans and not all american this year i mean they worked their butt off too and they could have easily done it again, you know, all, all battling some things. Um, but yeah, just this team we got and the leadership we have on the team is, is special. And I'm, it's awesome to be a part of. Is the monkey off your back now? Is this just like, I'm not worried about any, being an All-American. It's I'm going to win a national title. I mean, you can win 141 in my opinion. I talked to your dad about it in November at the Seagate Center or whatever it's Glass City Center, whatever it's called now. Where because I work with them in the National Middle School Duels. Um, I was like, your kid can win. I go, I think your kid can win. I go, it's just going to mm-hmm. come down and you know, it's going to be a five four match, and it's going to be can he get a takedown or can he hold a takedown off? Can mm-hmm. he scramble? Like the the weight's close. The weight's close. I mean, you beat mm-hmm. the highest returning All American from last year and arguably the toughest NCAA tournament ever, you know, the 2022 mm-hmm. tournament in Detroit. Um, is there any doubt in your mind? I mean, is it, is it now the, the all American things off my back? I did it. Now it's time to just focus on winning. I'm not worried about this. Like, cause I think that that gets a lot of people, man. I think that really mm-hmm. gets a lot of really great. I, you know, I talked to Eric Burnett a lot. He was going into his fifth year and mm-hmm. wasn't an all American yet. And I think that it was like, it weighed on him so heavily and that's a common you know a guy that you know he trained you he's a great coach Mm -hmm. a great friend of mine but you know he was a four-time state champ like you going into his Mm -hmm. fifth year you're going into your fourth year and you hadn't done it yet was Mm -hmm. this a huge relief to get on the uh, the podium being all american and these are these next two years like now it's just time it's time to make a run and win an ncaa title yeah i think there's some definitely some truth in that where it's you know, all American box um, is checked, and um, you know it's never like my goal throughout the season was to be an All American. The goal is still to be a national champion, right? Um, but you know, not a national champion, but All American. That's you know that's still something. Um, and it's a big goal. I mean, you know, wrestling, wrestling community holds that at a high standard and recognize. Um, you know, that's a, what guys are shooting for out of. Um, high school. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's time to, you know, really focus on, you know, it's, it's, you're right. I mean, this all American box check and it's the next thing up, you know, it's when a national title. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely that, that pressure where it's okay. You know, we're at the national tournament. We got a, we got all American. This is what, you know, this is something that is a standard. Um, I'm kind of, Achieving that is, um, yeah, it's a little bit of weight off your chest. Yeah, uh, you got Alara's coming back. You got um, the real Woods coming back. Got Bo Bartlett coming back. That's just the top three off the top of my head that I can think of. Right, it's a great mm-hmm. weight class. Right, it's a great weight mm-hmm. class. Deep coming back. Any doubt in your mind? I, you know, just bringing up those three guys off the top of my head. Any doubt in your mind? You can't beat those three guys. No, no. Um, they're really good wrestlers. Um, but I, 
there's no reason that, you know, I can't beat him. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, you gotta be, you gotta, there's a ton of tough guys. You're gonna have to beat them anyways. Um, if you want to win a national title. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I believe I can do it. I, I believe in you know, the coaches that got around me, the situation I'm in, um, myself, my support system. Um, yeah. Do you love wrestling as much as you loved it? As an OAC sixth grader wrestling Jordan Crace in the grade school or the junior high finals, do you love it like you loved it back then? Has your passion grown for it? Is it like a job? Do you still love the sport like you loved it as a kid? Yeah, I definitely love the sport. Um, but the times where you hate the sport, yeah. There's definitely times where you hate the sport a little bit. Um, but I love it. And I, I mean... I have, you know, everything that credit to wrestling, right? Um, it kind of feels something people preach to you all the time, you know, ex-wrestlers that have done it, you know, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of lessons in, less in wrestling and kind of, um, you know, kind of make you a man in a lot of ways. Um, helps me live my life the way I'm able to live my life. Um, would that have been the same without wrestling? Maybe, but... I doubt it, you know, and there's not a lot of sports that, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, throughout athletics, it's all, it's all hard, but I think wrestling, um, has certain lessons and certain disciplines that, um, kind of shape you into who you are. I mean, there's definitely times where it's, 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 it's I mean, it's such a hard sport to grind and you're like, Oh my gosh. And then you like, you take maybe, you know, after the season, you take a, a week off or whatnot, and you know, you're kind of ready to get back in the room. And there's nowhere else we can kind of train like that, you know. Um, someday I'm going to be done wrestling, and it's going to – I'm sure I'm going to miss going to practice. Like, man, I wish I could go fight somebody in a, in a practice room. You know, that's a great way to, I don't know, not worry about anything else, right? It's – you got all these stresses in life, everything that's going on. Um you can't take that to practice. Take that to practice, and you're not focused on practice. That's that's how you get your butt kicked. So you're kind of all in when you're in there, and it's 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 special. And it's a craft, and there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of intricacies. There's a lot to learn. Um, there's a lot of facet strength, conditioning, um, mentality, technique, um, individual sport, and team sport. It's it's cool. Um, I didn't really choose it. Uh, kind of. Like, you know, my dad started me in wrestling, but uh, I wouldn't trade it. It's a great release. Like, to your point, like, it's a great release. It's a great way to, like, you get to go up and f you get to go beat up on your roommates and fight your friends, right? Like, it's, like, mm -hmm. kind of cool. And that's the biggest yeah. thing I remember, like, you guys who are still my friends today who I text every day or talk to mm -hmm. every day. It's, like, awesome. It's the best thing ever. I got so many lifelong bonds. And it's, like, this crazy different bond, too, because you're, like, suffering with these people together you're cutting weight together you're living mm -hmm. with them it's just such a different different bond that you gain with people and it's just like really hard to explain to people like what you just explained is like mm -hmm. it's a great release and it's a great way mm -hmm. to like bond with these people who become you know now you get an opportunity to do it for six years right mm -hmm. yeah five years right it's just like some of the best people in my lives and you know, I'm I, my wife, I met my wife at Kent state. She was a volleyball player. I was a wrestler, yeah. right. Like there's things like that, that, uh, you know, like I, I owe my life and I owe like everything I have to think about it. Like it's what I, why I have the things I have in my life. And it's mm -hmm. like awesome to give back to those things and, you know, be involved with those things and promote those things and whatever it may be. And I, you know, it's like these places become really special to you. Um, what degree you have an undergrad already you got your undergrad in three years right and then this is it's college wrestling but we're there to get degrees right yeah 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 what degree do you have in undergrad uh so it's a bachelor of arts and i majored in psychology minored in business okay and then you're in grad school now are you in your second year or first year grad school this is my first year of grad school, and it's a two-year program, and it's uh, clinical mental health counseling. Okay, so I'm, I'm I'm doing some math on my hands. Undergrad, right? 
Masters, Masters. There's an additional year. <laughs> Doctor Demilio, what, what are we doing in our sixth year, man? Yeah, I'm. I'm a. Uh, sometimes I'm cool with winging it. Um, we're gonna get figure this master's out. degree figured out, you know, and we'll explore some options down the road. Um, you know, but there's one year certificate programs. Uh, I know that's an option, been an option for guys in the past. Um, you know, in their fifth year or you know, with this COVID year. Um, so that's an option. Um. There's another master's programs. I don't know. I don't even know if it's possible to start a doctoral program while wrestling. That's I don't just... think you can actually. I think you would have to do like yeah. an MBA or something like that, right? Like you'd have to do yeah, an MBA and get two two grad degrees. And man, you're yeah. gonna be all degreed up, bro. You're gonna have a bunch of degrees. You're gonna be very. You'll be the most educated Demilio there is, right? I don't know. Brothers doing a master's program. My uh. My dad's got a master's uncle. degree. Wait, you have an uncle that's a uh, eye doctor, right? Right. That's yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, he, I, he's my dad's eye doctor. Yeah, he's a categorized though. Different. He's not. Yeah, but it's your your dad's I know. sister. Yeah, yeah, married I know. to him. Come on. <laughs> he's your uncle. He's my uncle. Yeah. There you so, go. So categorize. There's some work to be done. Let's give, let's yeah. give categorize a little shout out, a little love here. Come on. Now. Shout out to categorize. Hey, they're actually crazy, crazy supportive that's of. Awesome. Uh, my, I mean, they come all the time to, they love wrestling, Good. which is super cool. Um, they're around all the time. I love that. They love it. Dude, real quick. My dad's a hillbilly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know my dad. I'm sure he's probably tried to corner you or your dad before and be like, Hey, how you doing? He's all weird. All hunched over iron worker. He was grinding with a grinder, like an angle grinder, mm -hmm. which is what you do when you're 74 years old. Right. <laughs> and he got, yeah. yeah a piece of metal in his eye mm -hmm. and i believe your uncle had to suck it out with a magnet no way yeah he sucked the metal shard out of my dad's eye he did i oh. surgery on my dad and he sucked I, does he operate i don't know it might have been another someone I, um i'm not sure if he does or not whoever it was i know he he was able to pull the piece of shard the metal shard mm -hmm. out of my dad's eyeball with a magnet. Yeah, that's crazy. Who would have thought a magnet? Because <laughs> that's what 74 year olds do. They get yeah. <laughs> shards in their eye and get them. I mean, it's like he magnetized it out of his eye. So he sucked it out of his eye. He magnetized the magnet, pulled it out of my dad's eye. I was like, dude, why are you doing that? Stop doing that. Just be like a grandfather and enjoy your grand. Like your dad, your dad. I know your dad's like a a jacked up grandfather, you know, he likes to work out and do pre-workout and, you know, measure out his meal and do, you know, he does, he, he's yeah. disciplined. Right. Um, but he probably still likes being a grandfather. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be the same way. Um, he's not going to stop his dad. My grandpa, he still works way too hard, way harder than he should. Um, my dad. Yeah. We'll see if he slows down. That's the, what it's, we'll we'll see about 55? that, but he does. He is he is a grandpa now. Yeah, is so five or fifty four. I want to say he was born in he was born in sixty five. So he oh would be, no no Dom is fifty seven, dude. Fifty eight. Jeez, Dave. Uh, no, maybe, he's gonna love. Maybe I know he's that. gonna love me putting his age out there. The dude looks forty. Yeah, he looks amazing. Like you're saying, he eats right. Those uh, healthy uh, Italian genetics probably don't hurt. <laughs> yeah. And he does love being a grandpa, though. He spoils, I mean, he spoils uh, my, my niece more than he ever, he ever did for my siblings and I. He, him and my mom love playing the grandparent role. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. I like it. Nothing. 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 Let them do it. They earned it, bro. Um, yep. Okay. So college wrestling has changed so much, even in just you being a freshman in 2018, 2019, right? This sport mm -hmm. has gone through a massive change. Um, you're at a flagship university, one of the, you know, 10 probably, well, not probably, you're one of, you guys are revenue-based athletics at Ohio State's huge. You know, your football team, 
is one of the highest grossing football teams year in and year out. But we're in the era of the name, image, and likeness, NIL. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't think about NIL and wrestling. Well, now they do. Mm-hmm. Since we've had these blockbuster transfers, a couple of them are yeah. at the weight. Obviously, Real made the big transfer from Stanford to Iowa. That was big news. Uh, Bernie made the big transfer from Cal Poly to um, Penn State. Mm-hmm. Uh, geez, Nagal, these Minnesota, Penn State, right? Like, so we've had all these different crazy people. Uh, the newest one is um, Shane Griffith to Michigan. All the guys to Michigan. I mean, Michigan just went and got four bona fide guys who can make runs at the wage, right? Mm-hmm. Three from Northwestern, a guy from Stanford. They're sitting pretty, right? And it's just like crazy. You can go out and almost buy talent. What is name and mm-hmm. image like this been like for you, Dylan? You're a humble Northwest Ohio kid. You're not some East Coast, West Coast guy, right? You're a humble dude. Um, you probably were going to go to Ohio State. Um, it's not, you know, you weren't. You went to Minnesota. You got recruited by a couple of Cornell, right? Those are two of the other ones, right? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, is name, image, and likeness, and making money as a, as a student athlete, has it changed anything for you, Dylan? I mean, not not a whole lot. Um, you know, I have had some like, um, a little bit, nothing crazy. Um, you know, Dustin Myers, um, I love working up, working out with him, hitting up, uh, old school gym and max effort muscle. Um, so I have a deal with them. Um, cause I mean, Dustin's just a good guy. He's my guy. Um, you know, and that came out and he's like, Hey, yeah, I want to take care of you guys. Um, so that's pretty much the extent of my, um, you know, play in the NIL space, um, which maybe that's me not being, um, not branding myself enough or putting myself out there enough, but I've never been, you know, a huge kind of social media um, or promotion type of guy, just not completely my personality. Um so yeah, I haven't. I just haven't gotten into it. Like I know some people have, um, but yeah, I mean, it is getting. It's it's definitely changing college athletics. Um, still not sure if it's for the good or the the bad yet. You know, I'm sure maybe a little bit of both, but um, there's definitely it's definitely different. What if Clarion comes to you or Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, whatever? They come to you, hey, man, you're an All-American. We like you. We're going to pay you $100,000 a year. We'll pay for, obviously, room and board. Is that even something that's on your radar? Do you even care about, like, how these guys are, like, kind of going out and, and and they're bidding on them, dude? For lack of a better term, guys are able to go to Iowa and take a visit and leverage. They're they're able to do that, right? Do you, Is that mm-hmm. even something that's on your radar even remotely? No chance. No, no I love chance. No chance. Not even that yeah. there was no stutter. No, eh, you're just like no chance, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm. You know, I'm a I'm a Buckeye. Um, you know, through my blood, and it's more than just you know being a Buckeye. It's you know the coaches that are pouring their heart and soul to me and my teammates, and you know, there's nothing. I mean. Like to think I'm a loyal guy, and those are my guys. I love it. Uh, you know, like there's people that aren't just they're not built like that, man. And I just mm-hmm. knowing what I know of the Demelios, there's just no doubt or anything or no BS in anything you just said. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If you got a graduate degree and something changed, you know what I mean? Like there's a sixth year on the table. It's just like wild to think that if things changed. Who knows at this point? It's just so wild. It's so wild west is the thing about it, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, who's predict? I mean, who's been predicting that all this is happening? Uh, Not me. Tough, you know. (laughs) Not me either. You you find something out that's crazy. You know, each week probably. Um, Yeah, they just uncharted territory. I think um, there can be some good coming from it. I think, you know, it's good. Some athletes are really getting some good benefits, obviously. Um, 
but yeah, I think it's so, it's so it's so new that I think they didn't know completely what it would look like, and I think they're just you need know, to maybe find a way to control it or um, control it. That's when you say that regulate it somehow because it's like wild to think there are guys who don't want to leave their Division One football programs because they're mm -hmm. gonna take a pay cut from. what they're making at their school to their NFL rookie contract that when I heard That's that, crazy. when that I heard that I was like, <clears throat> blew my mind, man. I, I couldn't even fathom it. And then the, um, LSU girl, I forget her name. Oh yeah. The one that was doing the, the, you can't see me thing. She talked about it on, I've heard her, her uh, she's like, I don't want to go to the WNBA and take a pay cut. <laughs> yeah i was like oh my that's God. crazy yeah when, when that when they, when the, when i heard those two things that to me i was I, I couldn't believe it and then hearing what they're paying guys to go to um the stanford guys who left hearing what they paid them hearing what they just paid some of these guys it's just it blew my mind when they're, when guys are getting six figures Yeah, and I, I, when I asked you that, I, I knew that you were just gonna be like, yeah, I don't, know, I don't, that don't concern myself with that. I, I, I yeah, like. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy. And I think, you know, some of it might be circumstance based. Who knows? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, whatever. Some, some guy's gonna get paid three hundred thousand dollars to go wrestle a college season. I, I just know that's not why a lot of people wrestle. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah there's, there's some more stakes in the game yeah yeah i mean that's crazy uh can your coaches still roll can can bo jordan still roll can um uh steber jags coach ryan can those guys roll yeah i mean you pull up the tape from this pra today's practice you'll see them all rolling so uh they definitely i mean it's they're all still you know, animals. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all masters. Um, you know, especially, I mean, I wrestled with Jay and Logan both and they're, you know, technique, IQ, wrestling IQ through the roof. Um, it's funny too. They, they hardly, they, you know, you ask them if they go or, you know, they didn't step in for a second. No warm up. Just like, all right, you know, roll out some shoulders real quick, step out of the mat and just, Right at the bang, and they, they still got it. Logan Steber came up through Burnett Trained Wrestling. I've seen him commit no less than a thousand felonies, like just grabbing his brother. Like the things he used to do to his brother Hunter Steber were literally criminal things that you wouldn't see people do to people, to other people in prison who want to kill each other. He would do, he would maul him. And then his dad would be, I, mean, I Hunter Steber is like, I say it. He's one of the toughest humans. I know. Like if you were like, Hey, we're going to need this guy to not, you know, we're going to have these people are going to torture him. The CIA is going to torture him, but it'll never tell anybody anything. Hunter Steber's my guy. Hunter Steber's my <laughs> guy. Hunter, yeah. Hunter Steber. And there's this uh, a kind of like a fat MMA guy. Who's also my guy named Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson and Hunter Steber, if, if you want someone to get tortured by the CIA, the mob, and you don't want to talk, you get Hunter Steber and you get Roy Nelson. They have iron jaws, iron joints. The dudes are the toughest humans ever. You can dislocate their joints. Dude, Logan used to maul him. Logan used to maul. Listen to this. He used to maul him, Hunter Steber. He used to maul my nephew, Ian. Ian Miller just mauling, dude. It was, it was, it was so bad. Yeah, I'm just sorry. Um, he couldn't do it to Chris Phillips. I don't, you remember Chris Phillips? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's got some bigger, way down. and I don't think he didn't mess around because he's smart and he doesn't like want to yeah. wrestle someone's gonna hurt him. He mauled those guys, dude, uh, Jamie Clark. He mauled Sam White. Um, him and David Taylor were always pretty because they were around the same size. That was usually those mm -hmm. goes that when I would see him. Those were pretty good goes. But, dude, the other – like, he formed a generation of wrestlers and made them better. I mean, look what he did 
with the 2015 NCAA championship team at, you know, Ohio State. It's a storybook ending. He wins his fourth title. They win the team title. I mean, can you write a better script? I don't think. Mm -hmm. That dude is a freak. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you talk about how tough Hunter is. You remember 2015 Nationals for Hunter. Oh, with the double dislocated shoulder. The whole deal was insane, man. Oh, Johnny yeah. DeJulius. Dude, he used to – what he used to do to poor Johnny DeJulius, your fellow Italian, was felonious. I mean, dude, he crushed – he would maul these dudes. Mm-hmm. Maul them, dude. And then, like, he'd be in, like, the Fargo finals and maul – I mean, dude, he maul – like, it didn't matter. It did not matter. The dude would just like grab dudes and be like, come here, arm bar them and like freestyle, just crush people. He had to, uh, cr- he's got like crazy grip strength, like squeeze mm-hmm. you. It's like, it feels like you're getting caught in a machine. Yeah. The crazy thing, he, he's like, his neck is crazy strong, which is nuts. Which is, yeah, that's the crazy. And, you know, he's in on a shot. He's in great position. I mean, Really hard to break his position. So, yeah, I mean, he's a freak. It's unreal, man. The people that guy used to maul, I, I couldn't believe it. And how bad he would beat him up. Mm-hmm. And, he, you know, and he he changed a whole generation of wrestlers in Ohio. And that was why they were really good. It was because of Logan Stever. It was why mm-hmm. all the guys that the guy mentioned were really good. And it was because of Logan. They had this alpha that would just smash everybody, dude. He smashed mm-hmm. everyone. And it's crazy because you got him and then you got Jaggers. Jaggers mm-hmm. is like what 36, 37 year old man can mm-hmm. still do crazy rolls and funk rolls and cradle guys and probably has to cheat a little bit as a as an older guy, but like it's amazing what those guys can do, but they're opposite styles. The one guy grabs you and you can just crush your arm bar you, smash mm-hmm. you. The other guy. You can't believe that he just sat the corner and he's 37 years old. This is unbelievable. He moves and still does crazy funk stuff. It's like, it's wild to watch. Yeah. The Jaggers is a guy with his wrestling IQ is incredibly high. And I'm, he's, he's my guy. Um, you know, he, we put in a lot of hours together, just kind of come in the mornings. I do some technique. Um, just really, just really, focused like really really focused honing in on positions i mean this dude dreams about wrestling and makes some moves in his sleep like not joking he's like oh yeah i had this dream last and not real move but you know he's he's constantly thinking about it and can kind of like feel it and break it down in um really intelligent ways and explain things well and kind of you combat that or add that with uh how gritty he is and how tough he is. I mean, it's no wonder, you know, that dude was a two-time national champ. And, um, you know, you could argue, you know, Jay kind of one of the spearheads of, you know, why Ohio State wrestling is where it's at now. You know, um, he was there before Tom. Yeah. Right? I don't um, think he gets enough credit. I don't think Jay Jaggers gets enough credit. And like you said, the dude dreams about wrestling. He loves it. Um, I like watching it. His son's tough. You know what I mean? He's – Jay's mm-hmm. a good dude. I like Jay Jaggers, man. He's a good cat. Um, does Bo Jordan lift weights as much as it looks like he lifts weights? Yeah, I mean his office. You know where his office is at, right? <laughs> no, I don't. It's right. So the coach's office are just right above the wrestling room. So they got you know twenty four hour access to you know the strength equipment, the wrestling mats, cardio. It you know, looks bikes, like that it. kind of stuff. Bo it takes advantage like of it. Yeah. Bo Jordan looks like it. He looks like he is. He looks like he could pry Russell with the heavyweights if he wants to. Yeah, he does. I mean, he, <laughs> he does. He does. Uh, he looks, dude, he looks unreal. Like I look at him, I'm like, oh my, you got to understand, man. I worked at their house when him and his brother mm-hmm. were playing on a trampoline in a sandbox with mullets running around with like <laughs> cowboy boots and cut off jean shorts when they were doing their five years. Six, seven years old, Rocky. Dude, one year, Rocky Jordan almost died. Rocky Jordan got whooping cough and almost died. And there's always this picture I showed me holding, like, gigantic baby Rocky Jordan. Have you ever seen it? 
I haven't seen it. I'll have to send it to you. I'll send you the picture. Yeah. Of holding. <laughs> yeah, He's in a that. diaper. He's in a diaper. Yeah. It's hilarious. But like, no. you understand. like, so it's like to see the guy as a man. Now, you know, you're old. I'm old. Right. So, you know, I remember you mm-hmm. as a little kid. It's just, it's wild to see how it all like comes full circle and to fruition as life progresses on. Man, it's awesome. I love it, dude. I love it. Yeah. You got anything yeah, else for me? You got, you got anything else for me? Any good stories? Anything? Oh man, I bad to get on the stop on the on the spot. Listen, it's all right. I'm okay with it. I, I just like asking you questions. I love how little you care about the NIL. That 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 is maybe one of my favorite things about talking to you tonight. You just it's not on your radar. Yeah. Uh, Anybody listen to this? If they want to, you know, throw me throw me some money and make out a deal, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were a rudest guy. You're not a rudest guy. No, I don't have a deal with them. That that's spelled the deal with them. So it's open. Got to go now. Hey, my guy, my guy, uh, 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 barbarian. They could, they could get at you, huh? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll make some t-shirts. Yeah, whatever. I listen. I think it's like for you know, like it's just like another thing. It's like another thing, mm-hmm. man. It's like another thing in your life. And I think you like keeping things simple. I think you like you're a simple dude, and you like to keep things. Why complicate things, right? Yeah, I mean, there's money's a lot going on already. Cool. Yeah, money's cool, right? I get it. But, like, just so much going on in our lives, you know, in, the, in this day and age. It's just, like, crazy, man. Oh, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. You know, you know, these guys do a good yeah. job. You know, your old, your old man loves them some good <laughs> soap. So, they're my That's guys. Right. We, got some, we got some in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, they do a great job. But it's, like, you know. I just like uh I like I like that you know that they're a wrestling company, they're wrestling guys, he's a you know guy Seiko, mm-hmm. guy Seiko. They're good people, they're easy yeah. to deal with, they're fair. Um oh are you staying at 141? You going up to 149? Are you doing anything with that? Do you know yet? Unless I'm not sure yet. Um yeah, it's either it would either be 41 or 49, but it's kind of uh Thing you just work out with a team. Um, I think I could, I could do either. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, if I knew, I'd tell you straight up, but well, honestly, I mean, I'm not fine. sure. I mean, that, so. Sometimes you just don't think about things like that. You're just, do I think you just cruise through life and you're whatever, whatever they need of you, you're going to do it. Yeah. We just don't have much of that anymore, man. Our society is just not geared. Like the Dylan D'Amelio's of the world are 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 the people running it anymore. Like, that's that's the thing about you. It's like, oh, the the, the secret's out about you. You do everything right. You don't got corners. It's always a, a guy you can rely on. It's Dylan D'Amelio. Appreciate that. I try to, you know, something. You know, just credit to the people that you know been, you know, that raised me. My mom and dad. You know, they're. I gotta. Just a good family. Um, great family. Northwest Ohio. Great family. Simple Northwest Ohio folk, as I like to call them. And it's mm-hmm. wild that I grew up in the same space as you. I grew up in Ottawa County. I grew up in Allen Township, right? Benton Carroll. Or we, we grew up in... Uh, dude, I went to Allen Elementary for kindergarten. Did you go to Allen at all? Did they have Allen or not? Allen is... Uh, it's gone. Third, no, it's third five. They tore it down. Yeah, it's not. It's like a it's like flat. It's nothing. They demolished it. So, yeah. out. So we had it was three through five, third through fifth grade. Um, my fifth grade year was last year of Allen. I mean that building was old. That was an old building. Dude, my brother Ferd went to Allen Elementary. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Did Dom go there? I know Dom went to Stretch, but did he go to Gen? Did he go to Genoa? Uh, the public schools at all? No, he was uh Saint Jerome, which is church we go to their their middle school um just catholic then did your mom uh, go to clay middle school did your mom go to clay? she's evergreen your so mom she's from evergreen some small town yeah oh no way matamora yeah she's so they both come from you know small town um uh, evergreen knows some things about some cornfields too yeah it's flat too dude it is so mm-hmm. listen when i go home it is so flat because where we live here, I live in the Sugar River Valley, and it's a, a beautiful area where I live. 
I go to Northwest Ohio and I'm like, I can't believe this. It's yeah. just how far you like, you can't see. You go on my road, you can't see down the road a mile each direction. Yeah. There's a big valley that it drops down into west of me, east of me. There's trees and it's just, it's just mm-hmm. like a beautiful area and you can't you can't see a half mile, you know? Yeah, you know, one of my favorite things about going home is 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 the is the flat flat country roads. That's the perfect place to run. I mean, you just go go the cut run to the country road, you go straight for as long as you want to go, then you turn back and you come straight back and you just you. And Columbus is a little busier. It's it's harder for me to find my routes. Back home, I just go straight and then turn straight back and, Dude, and then we're listen, home. Listen, everything's a grid, everything's square. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's a 90 degree turn, right? Yep. And it's yep. like, I used to run. My brother Tate and I used to run, and I would beat him. We'd run, we'd run two, three miles, right? We would run because we're on Nissan Road. You know where Nissan Road is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I run a Nissan run, Road when, I, when I'm. We'd run Nissan Road to Trowbridge. We'd run Nissan Road to Wallbridge. We'd run Nissan Road to. Hellwig. So you know these roads, I'm telling you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Upper Lentz is the parallel road. Upper Lentz, Jared yeah. Upper literally is that Upper family, by the way, if you didn't know. Really? That is his family. Yeah. So anyhow, we yeah, so- would run those roads. And my mom would follow us because we would run and we were soft a little bit. We weren't actually soft at all, but we would run with the wind because it's so windy there because it's so flat. And when it would be yeah. in the winter and it would be 20 degrees 10 degrees we'd still go outside and run but we would run with the wind and my mom would follow us i could beat my brother by three quarters of a mile on a two mile run bang and he's like i he would tell me he's like i can't even see you in that because she would turn her brights on Mm -hmm. he's like because she would run the flat we'd have the flashers on so nobody would come Mm -hmm. murder us because people drive so fast out there He's like, I can't even see you anymore. He's like, you'd be so far ahead of me, I couldn't see you. And I was like, yeah. well, you need to get faster, slug. <laughs> they beat me up. Dude, those same, those, that's that's where, that was my route, kind of. You know, just Curtis Road and then go go east for about five miles. If I was hitting a long to. run, I'd go. You have to. Because yeah, the, wind, the wind comes out of the west. Yeah. No, but I was... I'd go five down and five back. Oh my god! Um, when I was, I like running. That's actually something I, I mean, running for cutting weight and running outside in the summer when it's you know, pouring on you. That's different. But that's how I got good at running long distances. I would strand myself on purpose. You run straight for five miles. You gotta you go, go back. back. You that's, gotta go that, back. That's, yeah. that's gonna take you a long time. But you gotta get back home. So it's kind of play mind games myself a little bit. I ran a lot with no lights and it's pitch black there's no there's there's roads that you run down that have no mm-hmm. houses on yeah there's parts of Wallbridge and trowbridge road there for a mile there is not a house mm-hmm. by my mom and dad's there's not a like you get hurt you're not crawling to somebody's house yeah screwed um hey do you see coaching in your future yeah that's something that um i think i, I would be good at um, it could definitely be a potential option for me. Another thing where, where it would be hard for me to script that, um, you know, to have maybe an opportunity based thing. Um, you know, I'm going to do my school, finish my eligibility. Um, and if there's an opportunity where it seems like a good fit, then I could definitely take that route as well. Um, in that in that regard but I could, I could definitely see myself being a coach someday um and uh can you still hear me i got you okay i just got a little notification saying my interconnection is bumpy so is it unstable yeah unstable um i i told you i wasn't lying no but yeah we're i mean good. That, that could be something we're good. hey hey if it ends right yeah. now we got everything we need brother i appreciate it <laughs> I appreciate hey, it. It got so, tough for us. It got tough. The Wi-Fi got tough. It's staying consistent. Got gritty. Um, we just got gritty. We we kind of just pushed through it. We're good. That's um, right. 
college level, high school level, youth, middle school, does it matter to you where you're coaching and making a difference in wrestling? Um, probably not youth. Um, probably, That's probably either high school or college would be, yeah. And I, I like, um, I mean, I'm, I like kids and, you know, my mom babysat my whole life. She's a babysitter. So 15 kids running around my house all the time, you know, oh. pretty used to it. Um, wow. but just, I think I would, uh, probably enjoy it a little bit more, you know, some higher level stuff. Just, gotcha. um, you know. Is your brother the middle school coach at Genoa? Yep. Damien, right? at Genoa. Damien? Damien, yeah. Damien mm -hmm. and you were in the state finals together, weren't you? Yeah, that was super cool. Was Your super freshman cool. year, his senior year, right? Yeah. Yeah, speaking about people I look up to, Damien's one of them that's just, he lives he lives a good life. He lives the right life. Um, And he's only a year and a half older than me. But he's, he's, he's married has his own house, the teacher is coaching and he's a year and a half older than me. So, I mean, he's, he's done it and he does, he does things right. So kind of having that, you know, older brother that kind of just straight and narrow, you know, it's, that's another thing, you know, testimony to my, to my family. Sounds like it's the D'Amelio way. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. Right. Straight and narrow, there's the D'Amelio way, right? Right on the line. Yeah. I say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to Iowa State. I'm going to graduate. Oh, you already did that once. I'm going to go to Iowa State. I'll graduate twice. Uh, maybe three times. Yeah, we'll see. Over we'll see how many we can end up counting, yeah. I love it, dude. I love it. All right. Excellent stuff. Still in D'Amelio. Do you have anything else for me, sir? You're the man, Zab. I don't know if there's somebody that does it quite like uh, so I appreciate you reaching out to me, having me on here. Um, and I know you, you've always been in my, in my corner. Uh, I got pretty cool. So I, I appreciate you. you. I know you do. When people are like, what, what's going on with Dylan D'Amelio? And then I have to wear like what they did with Patty. I'm like, first off. Yeah. Stop. Stop. You don't know what you're talking about. Second off, we're talking about a person who, if I was in a, in a foxhole in a, in a war, you're one of the people I'd want in my foxhole next to me. You know what I mean? Like, that's a mm -hmm. testament. You can say that about someone, like someone to have your back. You're the guy. You know what I mean? I don't love that you beat mm -hmm. Cole Matthews in the round of 12, but guess what? I love Cole Matthews, but, like, if there's a guy to beat Cole Matthews, I'd want it to be Dylan D'Amelio. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just how it goes mm -hmm. and that's how it went. You know, I'm a huge fan of that guy, but you guys are guys like that who are just, like, good, wholesome, salt-of-the-earth people, and I love it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, thanks, Zeb. Thank That's you, awesome. That's awesome. All right. Thank you for the time, Ohio Cast podcast. Dylan D'Amelio, All American, new, newly minted All American, Dylan D'Amelio, future NCAA champion for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Are you a team captain? Uh, You're a you black know, shirt. You know the You're black, black shirt. shirt. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't have, have like scripted captains, but it's kind of the, the black shirts. So you're a black shirt. So you're a team captain and yeah. that's what the black shirt is. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you moving forward. Stick around if you got some time. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Ev. Thanks, brother.